Our body is designed to respond with incredible strength to different challenges that come our way. That is a stress response. It's taking our metabolism, taking our physiology and saying, we're going to push it to the limit with what we can do with energy production. Our mitochondria get upregulated, which means that our thyroid is being utilized in order to help upregulate that mitochondria. The adrenaline actually is also making changes within the, within the cell so that it forces the mitochondria to switch to the fast acting energy production mechanism because now is not the time to be burning fats for fuels, for example. That is great when we're in parasympathetic, but not when we are in stress. When we are in stress, we need the fast energy, which means glucose. So there's all these changes that happen in our physiology to be able to do superhuman responses to a danger or a challenge in front of us. That is stress. But there comes a point where that stress may turn into a trauma. It doesn't have to, but it may. And that's what I wanted to study. I wanted to figure out what was that difference what was the line that was being crossed that now would make the body go into a different type of response and the effects of that would last? Not just a temporary response like, oh, my heart's beating fast, but now I'm going to get a lasting impact on the biology in the form of cellular damage as a result of this trauma response. And after reviewing all of the descriptions that people would tell me and being able to observe them, it was clear that there is a line and it's really a line that overwhelms the system. And by the system, I really mean the whole body system now. <laughs> so that if we are responding to a danger, there's only a certain degree that we can respond we only have so much resources. We only have so much nutrients. We only have so much magnesium, for example. We only have so much ability to upregulate our mitochondria and our energy production. If the danger feels like it's bigger than what we have the capacity to respond to, that is when our body crosses the line. And it's actually a feature of our nervous system. It's called neuroception, comes from the polyvagal theory by uh, Dr. Steve Porges. And our nervous system is making that decision, which is why it's not based on reality. It is based on our perception of reality. And so this is when we can have a trauma response when we're having a conversation with someone because even though we're not in physical danger of our life, our body taps into our attachment wounds and insecurities, just like my son. Those attachment wounds stay with us and they inform us that if this person does not like us, then we would not survive because we will be abandoned, because we will be all alone and then we'd have to figure out life alone. So there's all these beliefs and concepts and constructs that our nervous system has in place already that inform it. How big is this danger compared to my capacity to respond? And so whether it's a real capacity difference or whether it's a perceived capacity difference, the end result is the same. And our body shifts operating modes. So that we go from saying, well, what I need to do to survive right now is I need to, I need to respond. I need to take action and I need energy to do that. That is the operating mode for surviving stress. But if there's nothing that we can do, if the danger in front of us is too big for us, our nervous system says our best strategy for survival is not to respond but it's actually to shut down. In the trauma world, we use the word freeze, the freeze response to describe that. And the freeze is a very specific moment in time in which our physiology is at a unique place that it does not exist at any other time. 
we have two operating modes at the same time as it transitions from stress to shutdown. And so going from stress, it's like having our foot on the accelerator in the car. We are pedal to the metal. We are all the way trying to respond and overcome by taking action. And the moment that our nervous system, again, that neuroception makes the decision, Ooh, this is too big for us. We're not going to survive this by responding to it. Instead, we should paralyze. We should stop taking action and instead we should conserve our energy. But in that moment of time for this freeze response, our foot is still on the accelerator. Our sympathetic nervous system is still pumping out adrenaline, but we have just pulled on the emergency brake. And so that adrenaline is no longer effective. If you were to take a blood sample, there'd be lots of adrenaline, but it's not actually doing anything because our nervous system has said, no, we need to shut down. And this is how we shut down. We, we make it ineffective. We block. And that communication is actually coming down the vagus nerve. The message for our body to shut down is coming from our vagus nerve. The same nerve that also communicates the rest and digest and the parasympathetic and the social engagement. 